Let's dig a little deeper into the topic of women and football. Here to help us is Mike Baco in New York City. He's an online sports analyst and sports managing editor for DailyNational.com. Mike, welcome back to the show. Um, 29, million, you, 29 million women around the world are now playing football. Certainly more teams playing in the Women's World Cup when it began two decades ago. So why the change? I think what you're seeing is that where you follow the money. There's money to be made here. There's money to be made in developing this game. It's great for women, young girls to get in on the ground level. It helps out with confidence. It helps out with nutrition. It helps out with health. But then as these players get in from the ground level, you see the games progressing and you see the games getting better. And as you mentioned, there's going to be more teams playing in this World Cup than there were in the previous one. So when with more nations playing, as of 2010, FIFA was saying that 141 teams, national teams, are playing and they're playing over 500 matches around the globe. That is an astronomical development considering that in the early 70s only two nations had teams. So this is a great development for the women's game. So younger girls are getting involved and they're, they're seeing stars. They're actually seeing women who are being celebrated. Which countries around the world do you think are the most improved or improving in terms of women's football growing in popularity there? I, I think if you just look at what's happening across the the bigger nations like Japan, like the U.S., like Germany, who have been dominating in the in the FIFA Women's World Cup, but you see the the powerhouse teams. I, I think of it uh, a lot like with the U.S. and the Dream Team in basketball from the early 90s, where every team had to raise their level to compete against the U.S. and then in some Olympic games actually beat the U.S. at their own game. So I think having some of these powerhouse teams like the U.S. and like Japan and like Germany who are prohibitive favorites, but it makes all the other nations raise their game. And I think we're seeing that. They're pumping more money into the grassroots, uh, bringing up and, and having some of the fields uh, refurbished and rehabilitated to get those girls out there so they can raise up and challenge, maybe not in 2015 in Canada, but possibly in future World Cups. You mentioned FIFA, and it's trying to do its part to increase the numbers of women playing around the world. Can you talk about some of FIFA's efforts? I think FIFA gets in at the ground level and also at the highest level. Uh, they have women on the executive committee. They have three women there right now. So when you have people at the highest level put, giving their input, trying to uh, come up with a strategy to increase grassroots involvement, uh, training facilities, and, and just getting the infrastructure in some of the developing nations and the third world nations, just actually getting them the proper equipment, getting them actual soccer ball so that they could play and they could learn the right way. So I think when you have women at the highest level like FIFA does and they're branching out and looking to get more women in, I think that's really going to help grow and, and grow the involvement. All right. Mike Baco in New York, as always, thank you so much for your time.